You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's the last day of February 2022. Seems like the world is literally falling apart before our very eyes. War breaking out in in uh, Ukraine and uh, wow, bank runs all over the place, stuff happening and well, you're probably going to want to hear what my next guest has to say about the opportunities that uh, are available. Of, he's written a book, The Sharper Investor, The Winning Formula That Boosts Your Returns. His name is Richard Thalheimer. Uh, you might be familiar with Richard. Uh, he was once CEO of Sharper Image and, well, it was one of my favorite stores. Always used to go hang out there in the mall when my wife was busy shopping. I'd go lie back in the massage chair and meditate for a half hour or so. Richard, it's great to have you on. So, hey, you've uh, achieved some pretty remarkable returns in the past five years. How does one invest when the world is on the brink? Well, thank you, Carrie, for the introduction. And uh, this certainly is a tumultuous time. Hard to believe markets have dropped so much since about November. So here we are a few months later, and we have some tremendous opportunities to make money. And obviously, we're very concerned with what's going on in the world. But at the same time, we don't want to overlook the chance to make some money, given the situation. Okay. So uh, as the old uh, Chinese uh, saying is, uh, well, may you live in interesting times. Well, we got that covered. But uh, the character, the Chinese character for crisis is composed of two characters, supposedly. And I've seen debates about this, but let's just assume it's correct. The first one is danger. The second one is opportunity. So where are the opportunities? Well, we're going to start with one of our favorite investors, Warren Buffett. And Warren Buffett was probably best known for one simple sentence. And I love it. And it's been a guide light, a lighting for my career, which has been uh, be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. What we saw last November was a lot of greed. Everybody was getting greedy and thinking the market would only go up. And now everyone's totally fearful and thinks the market will only go down. So we have to have the internal fortitude to invest now when there's opportunity. And we can discuss a few specifics, but that's certainly our general idea here. All right, so what about real estate? Uh, every, you know, everybody's saying it's a bubble, it's a bubble. On the other hand, we've got runaway inflation and asset prices continue to go higher. Real estate a good place to be now, or is it time to head for the exits? Well. I've lived a while. I'm 73 now. I've invested in real estate my entire life, and it's been an excellent investment. But I will point out that if you want to make higher returns, not 10 or 15% a year, but instead 50% a year, you're going to have to invest in the stock market, in my opinion. Okay. Stock market. So what about cryptocurrencies? Uh, have you uh, been working with them? Well, now here we're going to mention another famous mentor, Peter Lynch. Peter Lynch is a name that our generation knows because he made fame at the Magellan Fund by achieving 20% returns every year of his entire career there. And what he was very fond of saying was, invest in stocks you understand, that you know, that you use every day, that you love. Those are the companies you want to own stock in. So for me personally, I don't understand enough about crypto to love it. I don't use it. And so for me, that's not a good investment. But for others, it may be a perfect investment. And it's beaten down right now since November, just like the market is. So this is probably a good time to get in. All right. So you're not of the opinion that this is the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine, as the song uh, from REO Speedwagon said? Well, here again, if you'll allow me to quote Peter Lynch, he said, he can't control the markets. He can't time the markets. He can't tell you the bottom of the market. And Warren Buffett, 
agrees. You cannot time the market. But what you can do is invest in companies that are sound, that make money, that you know and understand. And when you can get those companies right now at 30% off their highs, that is a tremendous opportunity. It's funny you mention uh, Peter Lynch. I'm a big fan. I read that book. Great book. Um, didn't particularly do me any good. But one of his things is take a walk down the mall and see what stores are crowded. Uh, the problem with that thesis now is that oftentimes your mall, your local mall, is a ghost mall that has trees growing out of the food court. You know, I mean, they're totally down and out. So how do you take a walk down uh, Main Street to figure out who the future companies are or a walk down the mall when it doesn't exist anymore? Well, some of those companies are outside the mall and some are in the mall. I mentioned a couple of my favorites, Restoration Hardware, RH is the symbol. That one's taken over the mall right now by building giant 60,000 square foot stores. Uh, Amazon does have a store in my mall even though most of its business is outside the mall. And it's a fantastic stock that's 20% down right now. Uh, Apple's certainly doing well, and they're in the mall, and they're off their highs. Home Depot is doing great. It's off its highs. So there's a lot of opportunities in companies we see and touch every day. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, my mall has an Amazon store, too. I don't quite understand what its purpose is, but it's there, and there's people in it. And... It's funny you mention Apple when you do go to the few remaining malls that are around, around the only people in any meaningful numbers in a store are at Apple for whatever reason. And hey, I'm what you would call an Apple fanboy. I've got uh, Apple Watch, a couple of iPhones, a uh, piece, you know, Apple uh, Mac, MacBook Pro and uh, Apple desktop and uh, you name it. Uh, but that's for my business, but I do see the efficacy. And this is a company that just keeps going and going. And really for what they do, there really isn't competition. I mean, yeah, you could say that uh, the Android phone outsells Apple eight or nine to one, but the difference is that unlike most smartphone manufacturers, Apple makes tens of billions off of their smartphone. The other companies, or just uh, follow on Johnny come lately's that barely eke out a profit with the exception perhaps of Samsung. Correct. So true. Oh, and did I mention my favorite outside the mall company? Chipotle. Chipotle's doing fabulous, has been doing fabulous for three years now, and their stock is undervalued as well. Yeah, I like Chipotle. I'm a regular consumer of their food. When I can't figure out where else to go, I go there because I know the stuff's organic. You know, they've been slow to update their menu, which uh, I find rather disappointing, but uh, they got to go with the formula, I guess. Uh, what about a McDonald's or companies like that? Don't just survive, thrive. The Financial Survival Network. Fury Gold Mines is a Canada-focused exploration and development company committed to aggressively growing its scalable, high-grade gold assets with major drill campaigns planned across its 3.5 million ounce portfolio. Fury is led by a management team of proven explorers and developers with a track record of success in advancing and financing project development. Fury Gold Mines is well positioned to create value for investors with low risk development growth and the potential for a new major discovery. Fury Gold Mines trades on the TSX and NYSE American under the ticker F-U-R-Y. To learn more, go to furygoldmines.com. That's furygoldmines.com. This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever. Well, what, one of the things I think we could encourage everyone to do is to pick the best of breed, pick a market leader that's maybe a notch above the others in earnings growth. And for me, even though a lot of uh, chatter about McDonald's is out there, I just stick with Chipotle. I think they're really heads and shoulders above the rest in terms of quality. How, how fast has Chipotle been growing, Richard? Well, what happened was Brian Nickel is the CEO. He took over, I can't remember, maybe four years ago, five years ago. And he had made Taco Bell into a success. So he comes to Chipotle and he understands how to do business. But with the quality step up, 
from Taco Bell to Chipotle, that is a winning formula. So they're adding stores at a unit rate of about 15 to 20 percent per year, which is quite good. And their earnings are up. Their margins are up. Everything's great. And that is uh, one of the places if it's if there's a Chipotle in your mall's food court, you will see that there are many more people waiting to get food there than at the uh, other outlets. So I find that one kind of interesting there. Um, do you look at dividends at all, Richard, or are we only looking at capital appreciation? Uh, well, for me personally, I only look at capital appreciation. One reason is my account's taxable, and we should encourage everyone to think about this. If you're in a taxable account, what you really have at the end of the year is what's left after tax. And if you take gains by realizing the sale, or if you take dividends, you're going to be paying somewhere between the 30 to 50% tax, depending on where you live. So that's a big bite. So for me, I stick to companies generally that don't pay a dividend because they're fast growers. They don't need to. Okay. Um, yeah. So looking at it, capital gains, you're looking for capital appreciation. And they always tell you when you hit certain age levels, you should be more in bonds and less in stocks. You, you got a few years on me, not a lot, but uh, obviously you haven't uh, went gone by that advice. For me personally, I just don't like bonds. I don't understand why you would take a return of three or 4% a year. And instead, I'd rather shoot for that 50 to 100% a year. It's a little riskier, I suppose, but over the past 50 years, let's not forget, the stock market has averaged 10% a year growth average, some years better, some years worse. And since we're going to be invested over a three to five to 10 year horizon, we're not going to worry about the dip. We're going to just invest in quality companies, omit, omit the thought of trying to time the market, invest in quality companies and sit through it. If you had done that in 2008, 2009, the housing collapse, you would have seen your portfolio not only rebound, but double over the two years after that dip. Mm -hmm. But if we're in an environment of rising interest rates, which purportedly we, we were up until up until the war broke out, who knows now, what, uh, what do you do then? You just sit tight and wait for uh, things to work themselves out? Well, Kerry, that's a good statement, and I agree with that. We can't escape the fact that the rising interest rates have dampened the market. But that's why these stocks are priced at 20 to 30, 40% below what they were in November. Now, you might say, well, the high flyers deserve to be punished. They shouldn't have been that high. They, they don't have any earnings. And I understand that theory. But the good companies, the Home Depots, the Amazon, the Apples, the Restoration of Hardwares, the Chipotles, they're not affected by rising interest rates particularly. They've got solid earnings. Apple has solid growth. Microsoft has solid growth. NVIDIA, they make chips. The world is going to be devouring every chip that NVIDIA can make the next 10 years. It's already, yeah. Yeah. So will, that, will those prices rebound from being down 20, 30%? Yes. And if, if you give me one more moment, I want to quote Jim sure. Cramer. Jim Cramer is such a great advisor. He's on uh, Mad Money, his show every afternoon. And he keeps saying over and over again, if you like the company, if you like Apple, if you like Microsoft, if you like Google, and now you can buy it at 20 or 30% less than what it was six months ago, wouldn't you perceive that as a buying opportunity? Now, don't put all your money in at once. Nibble in, put in 20% of your money today and wait three weeks or wait a month. Put in 20% then and average in. But these are great pricing opportunities. Okay. So being in retail, um, having been around for a while, Richard, you've uh, been through this inflation thing before, if you remember in the 70s, where it was getting to the point where it looked like it was going to be runaway inflation. Looks like we're in a similar time period now. How do you, uh, how do you inflation proof your portfolio? I would suggest we look at stocks that don't really have a lot of exposure to rising prices. And I'm sorry I'm repeating myself, but it's the same stocks I've already mentioned. The NVIDIAs, the Micron Technologies, the Apples, the Googles, the RHs, Amazon. Geez, I mean, Amazon raised the price of a Prime membership from like $99 to $120. It is. 
And who uh, even knows? I didn't even notice. Yeah. So I don't think inflation affects Chipotle. They they talk about it. They say, oh, we've got rising food costs, but they've also got rising menu prices. So I, I guess I just don't believe inflation or interest rates affect the type of stocks we're encouraging our investors to get into today. Actually, I think uh, inflation is an opportunity because I remember the 70s. Uh, normally, in non-inflationary times, price increases can cost you business and you're very hesitant to raise your prices because your potential customers will be turned off by it and you might lose market share. But in an inflationary environment, you can raise your prices beyond the rate of inflation, faster than the rate of inflation. And the mass of consumers are actually expecting higher prices so they don't rebel against you. Yeah, Barry, you said it. So added uh, profit opportunity, which is why perhaps uh, during inflationary times, it's really the best time to own a business that isn't overly exposed to commodity prices because the increase in commodity prices can be jolting, like seeing uh, gasoline up 100% in the past year and that gas and, and all these other commodities, including food which eventually filters into all prices. Yes. So, all right, we've gone over a lot here. Uh, the book, you want to take a look at it. It's on uh, Amazon or, as I like to say, wherever fine books used to be sold, uh, called The Sharper Investor, The Winning Formula That Boosts Your Returns. The author who's on with us now, Richard Thalheimer. Richard, people want to find out more about you, connect with you on the web. How do you do that? Well, we have a great website and a free offer for people. If they go to thesharperinvestor.com, thesharperinvestor.com, and register for our occasional blog, we'll send you free our 25 pro trading tips, which are very interesting. It'll make you a better trader in the stock market. And it's free. Just sign up for our once a month newsletter and you'll get it delivered to you. Excellent. I'm looking at the site now and I'm definitely going to sign up. You should too. The Sharper Investor dot com. Uh, you'll see a link to it in the show notes to this interview on Financial Survival Network. Any questions for Richard, shoot me an email. KL at Carrie dot com. We'll get you an answer. And don't forget, sign up for your free newsletter. Richard, been an absolute pleasure, and we'll look forward to more work from you. Thank you, Carrie. It's a pleasure. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.